Good morning, everyone. Um, Hong Kong University of Science and Technology has been commissioned by Hong Kong EBD to conduct a study on marine vessels emission in infantry. And um, this study will not have been completed without the help and hard work of my colleagues who are listed here uh, on the front page. And I'd also like to thank uh, a number of people and organizations. I'd like to thank EBD and Marine Department to provide a lot of data and efforts to you know, help us complete this study. Uh, I would also like to thank, in particular, members of the marine sector in Hong Kong because they have been extremely helpful to this study. Without their information, without the data, uh, we have nothing to start with, really. Now, um, because of time, I will focus on the key findings, uh, some interesting findings of this study uh, in the next 15 minutes. Um, but it, the study actually is quite detailed and technical. Um, if you look at the, uh, the scope of work, actually it covers an infantry for base year 2007 uh, as well as a backcasting exercise uh, between 1990 to 2006. And of course we want to look forward and we've done a forecast as well uh, between 2008 up to 2020. Now, but like I said, I will focus on the base year findings. And um, now I'm sure you're familiar with the uh, Hong Kong waters uh, and the boundaries. Uh, for this study, we look at uh, different vessels, uh, so emissions are actually estimated down to a vessel type. If you look at ocean-going vessels with uh, passenger-carrying vessels like cruise ships, of course we have a lot of cargo-carrying vessels, including container vessels, tankers, uh, conventional cargo vessels, and drive-out carriers. Uh, but of course, in Hong Kong, we do not only have ocean-going vessels, the big ships, we also have a lot of river vessels plying in this area coming from Pearl River Delta ports. Uh, on top of that, we also have a lot of local vessels supporting uh, the operations of the bigger vessels, as well as carrying you know, local passengers like local ferries who are a very important part of our you know, uh, water transportation system. Now in this study, we also look at river vessels. Uh, we classify them by Macau Ferry as well as the uh, ferries uh, operating services between Hong Kong and some Peripadella ports. I'm sure you're also very familiar with those. Um, for all the cargo carrying vessels, we lump them in together and to call it the uh, river trade vessels. Now, in this study, we do not uh, cover local vessels, um, but we, uh, with the help of EPD, they've done their in-house work. We kind of cherry pick some <coughs> of the numbers to put it into a bigger picture, a fuller picture of total emission in Hong Kong for you to understand. Now, we've covered uh, the major air pollutants, including SO2, NOx, PM, VOC, as well as carbon monoxide. Um, I also want to emphasize that uh, for vessels, uh, most of the emissions are coming from the, the engines, the main engine and the auxiliary engines. But we should not overlook emissions coming from boilers as well. For some of the larger vessels, actually, they requ uh, require a lot of boiler steam uh, to you know, uh, keep up. Uh, the energy requirements. So boiler emission is actually a very important part of marine emission, emissions that we should consider. Um, this is quite technical, you know, the uh, method that we use to calculate. So by the time the uh, report is published, which I believe will be very soon, then you will be able to look at the great details and the technical details that you, you, you're looking for. But for the purpose of this audience, I would just really simply say that um, this uh, emission inventory is developed mainly by activity-based approach which means we look at some information about the, uh, the ships, the engine ratings, and we also consider the way they operate, uh, their operating characteristics. So how much time they spend at berth, how much time they are slow cruising, for example, how much time they are you know, trying to maneuver into their berthing location, so on and so forth. That, that's why we are very con uh, interested about how the uh, engine actually operates it, uh, under a certain condition. And with some uh, uh, fractional load emission factors developed elsewhere, we can then apply those numbers to calculate our emission uh, from Hong Kong. Uh, this is another way to show how we do the estimation and on this chart actually we also show some of the uh, key uh, data sources. For example, we uh, draw a lot from Marine Department's database and we also use Lloyd's data uh, which provides a lot of vessels information for our calculation. Of course, we have done our own uh, emission uh, survey as well, uh, our, our, our survey as well as to collect as much local data as possible. Now, this is what I've mentioned uh, just now that we have uh, picked up some of the local uh, vessel uh, emission numbers from EPD and put it together as a pie. 
if you look at uh, the three charts here, here we differentiate emissions coming uh, from ocean going vessels, river vessels, and local vessels. Now for SO2 and for uh, PM, we can see that uh, ocean going vessels are the major emitters. They contributed up to 80% of the uh, pollutants, uh, followed by river vessels and then to a small extent local vessels. But if you look at the NOx emission chart uh, to the right, uh, you can see that uh, contributions from the three types of vessels that I just mentioned actually are quite even. So uh, another message is that uh, while we look at, uh, for example, SO2 and PM, which we definitely want to do something with the ocean going vessels, we should not forget that actually for uh, other pollutants such as NOx, uh, we basically have to deal with all sorts of vessels in order to reduce emission. And that's a lot to do with the engine quality as well. Now we just now focus on ocean going vessels, okay? For the ocean going vessels, uh, if you look at the major emitters, uh, I have to say that container vessels is the major emitter, is the number one emitter. There's no doubt about that. If you look across different pollutants, they contributed about 80% of SO2, NOx, and PM. Now, if you consider the second emitter, that is the cruise ships, they also contribute about 10%. Now, so if you follow the list, Further down, uh, you look at the third one, which is all tanker and then conventional cargo vessels and then drive bulk carriers. All the top five career, uh, all the top five emitters, uh, combined actually contributed about ninety eight percent of all the ocean going vessels emission. Now, um, this is I think good for control because we if we focus on the top five emitters and uh, concentrate our effort. We can very quickly, or not very quickly, but at least uh, by, uh, I mean, in theory, we can deal with 98%, which is the, the huge majority of the emission produced by OGV. I also want to show you, you know, um, uh, emission uh, divided among equipments. Uh, at the start of the presentation, I talk about, you know, most of the emissions are coming from main engine and auxiliary engine, and if you look at the charge, it kind of proves that this is the case. But don't forget, like I said, boiler is also contributing a lot of emission, especially for SO2 and PM10. Another way to apportion OGV emission by pollutant is to look at the operation mode. Um, if you consider a, a complete vessel core, uh, starting from the, the point where the vessel starts, uh, it uh, stays still, so it's uh, hoteling, and then it starts to maneuver away from the um, from the pier or from the you know the point where it's, it's stationary. That is the maneuvering part of the journey. And then it speed up a little bit in the harbor area, probably with some speed limits. And it, that part we call it slow cruising. If it moves outside the uh, you know water boundaries uh, into open sea, probably they will speed up to their full speed, uh, which we usually call cruising. Um, and then as they approach. Uh, their next berthing location, they will you know reverse. They will slow down. They will maneuver into the uh, the berthing location, and they will stop. So uh, with all these operating mode, we can actually tell uh, from this chart for SO two, a um, lot of up to thirty percent of the emissions are actually produced at the point where they stopped, where they hoteled. Then followed by slow cruising as well as cruising, which is quite obvious because of the high speed and then the high energy requirement to keep up the speed. Now, this is <coughs> river vessels, okay? If you look at river vessels in terms of the, um, you know, the major river vessel types and their contribution to emission, if you look at the three charts, actually it's quite similar in terms of uh, the shares and the ratios. Um, the majority of the emissions are produced by river trade vessels carrying the cargo. Some of them are container feeders, we also have a lot of sand barges lately, you know, because of all the construction around. Uh, we have a lot of, you know, uh, cargo vessels carrying uh, recycled paper, so on and so forth, back to mainland China, back to the PLD for recycling. Uh, apart from the cargo carrying vessels, we also have Macau Ferry contributing, for example, 41% of SO2 emission. Now, this is also uh, uh, understandable if you consider the, re uh, the frequency of Macau Ferry, uh, you know, operating between Hong Kong and Macau, especially during festive period. Um, let's not forget PLD ferries also contribute a lot. So this is the general picture 
uh, which is more unified, I think, uniform uh, for, for the portion, the proportional share among the key uh, vessel type. Once again, by equipment, we can differentiate now about 80% of all the pollutants are produced by main, main engine and the rest by auxiliary engines. Now, we don't have boilers, mostly, we don't have boilers on board of river vessels because of the small size and because of the energy requirement. Lastly, uh, for river vessel, if you also try to differentiate by the operating mode, you can see that uh, almost half of the, of the emissions are produced during higher speed, during the cruising mode. Uh, if you think about uh, the Macau ferry as well as the PLD ferry, as they move away from the harbor area, like I said, with uh, speed restriction, they can then speed up to you know, shorten uh, the, the journey in terms of time. Uh, as a matter of fact, actually, for the PLD and Macau ferry, they are exempted from the uh, speed limits within the harbor area. And that's why they can speed up uh, a lot and to you know, shorten the journey. But then they also produce a lot of emission during that period. Now, with all this information, I think it is useful if I can map the emission so that you can tell where are the emission hotspots. This is what I'm going to show you. Now, if you look at uh, the red dots, this is where, uh, for SO2, from all marine source, including ocean-going vessels, river vessels, and local vessels, uh, the red dots near Kwaishong Container Terminal is the hotspot. This is very obvious, and it can explain. If you uh, combine what I've just told you, emissions are mainly produced during hoteling at birth. Okay, and container vessels is the major contributor of OGV, ocean going vessels emission. And if you combine two together, it's easy to understand why Kwai Chong is the red spot. But then don't forget, I think it's really important, don't forget that if you look along the orange lines, these are the major fairways where uh, large or small vessels enter Hong Kong and move into the harbor areas. Okay, these are the major airways, for example, the East Lama Channel, I'm sorry, I don't have a pointer here, but um, now this is the Islam Channel. Uh, large vessels, including container vessels, they will just sail up here, then uh, slow down, maneuver, move into the container terminal areas. Some of the vessels, after loading and loading in Hong Kong, they will sail out again. Uh, and then move up through the Mawan fairway, going maybe to Sheko here. Okay. Now, it is also interesting to notice that up here to the northeast of Hong Kong, we have a quite distinctive emission corridor here, which I call. They are vessels cutting through Hong Kong waters and going to the port area here in Yantian. A lot of the largest container terminals are following this route to Yantian. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is uh, emission at the container terminal is important. We have to focus on it and try to do something about it. Obviously, uh, the industry uh, come up with fairway charter, which is a great way to you know solve that problem to a large extent. Um, but then we also have to think about the other emission corridors especially those related to the activities between Hong Kong and Peru River Delta. Now, the next map shows you um, a different pattern, which is by the ocean cruise. For those who have taken Hong Kong-based uh, uh, cruise ships, you know that say, they sail eastward to the open sea and then come back the next morning. So this picture also shows you the pattern of emission. Now, these are the Macau ferries. Okay, once again, if you're familiar with the routes, you can tell uh, the emission. Now, if you look at the red dots, they are close to the China uh, uh, the, the uh, terminals in Xiangwan. But once again, if you look at the routes, uh, it's in orange, which is you know, quite serious in terms of emission uh, because of all the speed. Now, to conclude, I think uh, we can see a few things here in this research. Number one, SO, for SO2, uh, and for PM, OGV is a major contributor. But let's not forget NOx, because NOx is also a serious pollutant here in Hong Kong. And apart from dealing with the roadside vehicles, we have to also think about marine, emission, uh, marine vessels. Secondly, the top five emitter, once again, it contributed 98% of all the OGV emissions. 
by and large. So we have to target them. Uh, now for uh, emissions coming uh, from ocean cleaning vessels, they're mainly from main engine as well as auxiliary engine, but let's not forget boilers. Um, emission at birth is significant, it's up to 30 to 40 percent, so we must put our efforts on it. Um, now, don't forget the periphery and PRD ferry, and lastly, the map shows you that don't move your eyes, just, don't just focus on the red, red dots, also focus on the corridors. Uh, if you look at the uh, corridors and uh, uh, closeness to some of the you know, residential areas, not just in Kwai Chong, but also in other parts of Hong Kong, including Island South or including Pao Fu Lam, it's really quite, quite close. I'm sure some of you actually live there. I'm not sure whether you're aware of the problem or not, but definitely if you look out of the window, you see a lot of vessels coming, coming through, and usually with black smokes. So there's something that is actually close to you. So please try hard and try to fight for cleaner um, uh, vessels and try to cut the emissions. Now, for this study, um, I think it will go a long way to help government formulate uh, effective government policies. And for policies, I think for discussion purposes, I just list out some of the uh, common uh, measures that's been uh, approached or used in other parts of the world, including field switching, sometimes it's at birth field switching, sometimes it's field switching within uh, the water boundary, or even, of course, do it in ECA. Now, uh, we have another option of using shore side power, which I think Hong Kong will begin to discuss a lot more. Uh, other than that, some of the companies are actually slowing down their vessels, so by slowing down to lower speed, actually, it will reduce the energy use as well as emission. Last but not least, I think we cannot forget the regional context, as the map shows you, actually. Now, because it's a study that focuses on Hong Kong waters, but all the emissions actually will stretch out to the entire region. Uh, we have to consider uh, emission in this region as a whole, not just for Hong Kong. Uh, with that, uh, I finish my presentation. Thank you so much.